What's up, everyone, and welcome to Monday's edition of Reptile News. Hey, guys, I hope you had a great weekend. And I want to start off today hitting on a little story that we had talked about last week, and that was the uh, reptile dealer. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't want to I don't want to talk about negative. Um, we got enough of that coming later in the show today. But um, something that came up in the comments, I'm not sure everybody noticed, and that was somebody had mentioned, um, you know, other dealers that they that they support because of how they take care of their animals and and whatnot, or what for whatever reason. And it also came up about dealing with breeders directly. Um, I've dealt with breeders directly on numerous occasions, um, and I do have to say I've probably some of the best experiences that I've ever had in this hobby were from dealing directly with breeders, so I definitely recommend that whenever possible because literally the best experiences I've ever had have been directly dealing with breeders themselves. So now we're going to start off on a story in Florida of all places, and I don't... How do I want to put this? It's not bad news. It's good news, but it's repetitive news. Apparently, there's a population of um, American crocodiles that are thriving near a nuclear facility. Now, I read some of this, something about this the other day, and I actually, um, I think it was Chris Law posted something about it, and I re on Facebook, and I replied to him and mentioned how I ran a news story several years ago on this very topic. And well, this news story has once again emerged, and apparently last week. Um, they rescued 73 crocodiles from this facility. Now, surprisingly enough, apparently the reason they rescue them, which I, I don't, I don't do that, and to be a, a smart ass, I mean, I'll just tell you how it is. It's, uh, um, I just do that because rescuing seems like if if an animal, and, and this is just my opinion on this story, if an animal which was once on the brink of extinction is thriving in an area, leave it alone. I mean, study it, yes, study it, but don't relocate it. And that's what happens with these. They relocate it to uh, help with survival rates. Um, apparently they have 168 miles of man-made canals where these things are thriving in and uh, researchers do help build nests and, and, and maintain areas for them to live but um, that's just my opinion on this story. I'd love to know what you think though. Leave a comment down below and let me know why my cell phone is going off right in the middle of a show. That'll be a great one to read about but honestly I had to I had to check because um, just in case my wife was texting me. But yeah, anyway, for the real comment, I mean, you can comment on the cell phone thing or you can comment on what you think about anything about these American crocodiles thriving down there and, and some of the um, methods that are being used to try to um, ensure their future here in America. And now we're going to move on to Pennsylvania, more specifically Pittsburgh, where apparently in recent time they found four alligators in Pittsburgh. Now, if you're unaware, alligators do not belong in Pittsburgh. And I got to, you know, I have to point out every time we talk about alligators being found somewhere, it seems to be accompanied by the sentence. If you're unaware, alligators do not belong in fill in the blank um, pretty much anywhere other than the extreme southern part of our country but they apparently found four of them so far in Pittsburgh and now authorities are saying it's not illegal to have alligators in Pittsburgh but it's or in Pennsylvania Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania one or the other and I have just for your pleasure muted my phone but they do not advise you to let them go I don't even think that they can they survive up there is there anybody watching that knows about alligators or crocodilians and in, in specifically um can they survive in Pittsburgh um I don't know if they can, but that'll be something very interesting to learn about if any of you out there know for sure. But this, I have to bring it up because it's a problem that we face over and over and over again. These are very clearly either escaped or released pets. Um, presumably, these particular pets are released pets. Um, <clears throat> I have a, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I'm not going to say it's an on the fence idea or they don't. I don't believe there's an excuse for to ever lose or there's, there's absolutely no excuse to ever release an exotic animal out in the wild. And it's, it, it's debatable whether it's okay to release a native species, which you've brought into captivity for a time back into the wild. Um, one of the things that's killing the desert tortoise down in Southern California was an individual being brought in and I believe capturing some sort of respiratory um, ailment if I'm not mistaken and then being released back out into the wild so actually here in California I'm sure many states have 
similar laws, but here in California, it is against the law to release an, a native animal back into the wild without the express permission of the Department of Fish and Game. Um, I've done it before with the permission. Um, I'm, I'm a stickler for the law. Those of you that have known me for a long time know that even if the law doesn't make sense, I'm going to follow it because I am no person to say what law makes sense and what doesn't. I try to do what I can during voting time, but sometimes I fail and I have to follow the, the stuff that's voted in. So it, 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 it's, but back to, we're getting a little off in left field there, but back to the topic. It is never, ever, ever okay to release an exotic animal in, into the wild. Never. There's no excuse for it. Um, I, I can't, for fear of having this video shut down, tell you what I would like to do to the people that do it. <laughs> um, um, but even animals escaping into the wild as, as stewards of, of our hobby and, and keepers of these animals, we, we, we need to hold ourselves to such a high standard that to, we need to understand that with the, with the uh, large constrictor issue, which we've been fighting, I mean, we no doubt caused this problem to happen and now we're fighting to resolve a problem that we caused that we have not yet been able to resolve. Um, we, we can see though the the adverse effects it, it has on local wildlife and not only that if you take an exotic animal and release it in an area that that um, suffers sub freezing temperatures in the winter time it's a death sentence to that animal that animal would be better off getting a bullet put between his eyes as bad as that sounds that is a much more humane and than releasing an exotic animal into any of the uh, northern territory so anyway guys that's where I'm gonna end today's show if you'd like to read any more about these stories plus a couple that I didn't get to today. That link's right down below here in the description. And as always, if you're still watching, my name is Jason White. And now you know what's going on in the reptile world. Be good to each other, and we'll see you Wednesday.